You're listening to the Oz TV podcast, only on the Oz Network. Hey, this is Billy Garcia from Survivor Cook Island, and welcome to the Oz Network's Survivor Ghost Island recap. Uh, today we're going super, super old school throwback. We've got none other than the executive producer of the Oz Network, Ben Waterworth. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you, Billy, for having me on the Oz Network. It's a pleasure to be on such an esteemed <laughs> and highly regarded podcast. It's great. That was great. And, of course, we have Ben's tag team partner or partner in crime, whichever way you want to look at it, and that's Colin Hiding. Hey, hey, Colin. Hey, uh, if Ben gets to be the executive producer, I am the president and CEO. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Trump. <laughs> see, see I, I thought you were going to be like the uh like the, the 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 president of treasury or something so any money that comes in <laughs> that's right i'm 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 the money bags <laughs> you're the money every penny of it <laughs> yes <laughs> all right so uh so we've got our third i it, i don't know what to call it the second episode third episode it, it, it's 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 to the point where survivors this season is, is is so confusing, at least to me it is, uh, that that the beer doesn't straighten it out for me. It <laughs> makes it worse. <laughs> so uh, I guess this is a third elimination. We'll call it the third episode. How's that? <laughs> yeah, that works. That works. <laughs> All right. So our episode begins with uh, with the aftermath of the uh, the Jacob uh, elimination. <laughs> I don't even know what you want to call it. The poor guy, man. <laughs> I, I really adored him. <laughs> he came to play. It, you know, it's just... Uh, uh, he was like... Uh, What's what's a good way to look at him? I, I would say he he had the dodo edit. Was that is that oh, yeah. fair? <laughs> <laughs> it was Seth Rogen, right? This is. Can we all agree that this is Seth Rogen's twin? I mean, this guy looks exactly like him. <laughs> the poor guy. <laughs> you know what I thought? Who's that? I don't know the name of him. I mean, he's Bob Ross. That's who it is. The painting guy from PBS. This is like <laughs> oh. his son. I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> uh, uh, dead. Deadpool did a did a parody of, of that for their second movie trailer, yes. where he's he's got the mask, the Deadpool mask on, and then the Bob Ross wig on, and he's doing <laughs> doing like this. This painting is great. Uh, oh man, yeah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> he should have been a little. Jacob should have been a little bit more Deadpool and a little less Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I like Jacob. I I was yeah. sad to kind of see him go out the way he did, and um. I mean, it's it's kind of interesting, this whole Ghost Island twist, that basically they seem to undersell the fact that if you go to Ghost Island, you're immune from the vote. Like, they kind of did it a little bit this week, but the first week, at least, it's kind of, you know, as soon as, what's his name, Donathan, um, whose parents obviously couldn't decide between the name of, like, Dean and Jonathan, so they were just like, let's put them together. <laughs> um, like, he obviously was kind of going to be looked at, but he gets saved, so therefore Jacob's up, and I guess Jacob was saved on the first vote, but... Um, yeah, I, I was sad to see Jacob go because uh, I, I really liked him. And this is a cast that I'm not finding myself liking a lot of people. It's kind of, it's taking me a while to warm up to a lot of these people. So the few that I do like, I was I was really sad to see Jacob go. But yeah, I mean, they didn't yeah. really seem to care too much about it, did they? <laughs> when they got back to camp, like, oh, well, Jacob's gone. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, what they seemed to harp on once they got back, was they were letting James have it, like saying, like uh, basically saying, don't, don't, don't slit your own throat. Like that's our job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's pretty much what they were saying. Like, like James ruined their fun. Like they were supposed to beat him up, and he beat himself up. So, <laughs> so uh, that was my take. And then uh, I guess the uh, the the big thing happened the next morning. The very next morning, they 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 stroll into Jeff Probes. And Jeff Probst is asking them how much they love their tribe and how great they are together. And we're just starting to heat up and get and, and start to live up to that best tribe ever moniker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he hits them with the drop their buffs. Yeah. Well, they had to swap it, didn't they? Because they were the best tribe ever. So clearly, you know, it was, uh, <laughs> you know, Karor all over again. They just have to, you know, quickly, before they quickly start dominating everyone. So that's why they had to quickly, you know, swip, swap, them, swap them around, essentially. Best tribe of going to tribal council, maybe. Yeah, well, <laughs> you... 
<laughs> Doesn't Oolong hold that record? I thought like that's just that's held by them. I it's, it's I I swear they were going to do it to three tribes because what that brought them down to. I mean, there's 20 on this season, isn't it? So that would have brought them down to 18. So. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking it was just going to be this one they've done recently with the three tribes. So it kind of surprised me that they kept it at two. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of one of those things that personally it didn't bother me at all. Like, I, I haven't read any of the fan reaction where the people are going, this is too soon, this is too soon. But I guess in Modern Survivor, we just have to come to expect these things. There's, there's no real shocks they can do. Maybe on day one, like if Jeff is like, welcome to Survivor Ghost Island, drop your buffs, we're swapping tribes. Like, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> do that maybe but yeah it's it's kind of gets to the case and none of them really seemed overly shocked either so um i don't know like their 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 regular twists don't seem to bring that factor as much as they they used to um so which is which is interesting considering that you know only a few seasons ago we'd have been like what they're switching up in the third episode what the hell i mean i'm kind of <laughs> glad that uh they're doing it now but it, the, if they had done it for three, I really didn't want them to do three because I'm not saying I'm over the three tribe thing, but we've had all three tribe seasons for so long. So to get two tribes, it's kind of refreshing. But the downside of it is I don't even know if this is the fault of you know the twist or two tribes or just the editing of seasons. I have no clue who any of these people are. Yeah. So this whole episode, I mean, Jacob was the only real character we had going into this, and he's gone. So this is like starting fresh. So it's almost like a new premiere to me, but. You know, when they drop the buffs and they're like, okay, well, you're on this tribe, you're on this tribe. I'm like, which tribe were they on originally? I can't remember. And it was five minutes ago. I'm like, who's Bradley? <laughs> Is this guy been on the season yet? Uh, who's Jenna? Who's Kellen? Like, I'm going through these names here and I'm like, I can't remember which tribe they're on in the first place, let alone which one they're on now. I'm exactly the same. Uh, and and I, I will say I did not, like, I looked at nothing preseason. I saw the cast photo. That was it. And I'm like, oh, cool, you know, 90% young, attractive white people. Great, just another season of Survivor. But, like, <laughs> and it really, it, it kind of, like, this is the weirdest season for me because I've been so used to however many seasons, you know, analysing, looking, and even kind of, I feel in that first episode, you start to get to know them a little bit. Like, uh, you know, Millennials, Gen X, Co. Wrong, I didn't really pay much attention to it pre-game, but I still felt I knew who most of these people were after a couple episodes. And I'm the same as Colin. Like, I legitimately was watching this episode last night going, shit, I've got a podcast about this tomorrow. Who the fuck are half these people? Like, who's that one? Who's that one? Like, which, who's Morgan? Morgan went, she had the legacy event. What? Oh, okay, right, I remember that now. Um, like I think between between Donovan, Donathan, Donovan, whatever his name is, um, <laughs> the the dude who's got the fake idol, who's really got a real idol, who to me is uh, is um Seth MacFarlane, um, and yeah, I'm just calling him like their doppelgangers basically, um, and then the one, the pretty blonde, who basically got rid of Morgan. I don't trust the pretty young blonde or whatever. I I just that's all I'm referring to these people as. I don't actually know their names. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I will say this, Dave V. Uh, to to my pleasant surprise, they seem to they they've brought back a few things from from my season. Um, everything from the the winning tribe sends somebody to instead of exile island like it was on my season, it's ghost island, mm-hmm. which works almost the same way. You're excluded from the boat, and then they swap the tribes after two eliminations. That's also awesome for my season. That's a good point. So. So is Jacob yeah, so, you so, then? Is Jacob you because uh, the second boot? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, he, he was the chubby guy, right? That wasn't liked immediately. <laughs> so. well, he, who did he fall in love with? No one. So um, the game. He fell in love with the game. So there you go. Uh, is that right. going to come up as one of the you know, uh, ad- I don't know, advantages or whatever on Ghost Island. Like, you know, you have fallen in love with a contestant on the other tribe. What do you want to do with that? Express your feelings. You smash a thing and, and Candace is just standing there. Here's Candace. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to fall in love with her. Reverse the curse. <laughs> you, you know what it'll be? It'll be, it'll be, uh, you have to pick somebody from the other tribe that you're in love with, and then you, when you when you smash the urn or whatever, it's a restraining order, and now you can't vote that person out. <laughs> Here's John Cody ready to bash you with a club. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So so they swap tribes, and uh, immediately what we find out is that uh, Navidi, who hadn't lost, has the advantage on both tribes because their their ten got split to five and five. And uh, the original Malolo, uh, I love that name, Malolo. Malolo. It's like my brain. Like I, every time he says that, I tune out of everything else that that Jeff Probst is saying. My 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 brain starts thinking, "How Malolo can you go? How Malolo can you go?" 
somewhere. <laughs> so I actually missed a lot of what Jeff Probst was saying. <laughs> but um, yeah, the original Malolo uh, got split evenly as well to four and four. So they're basically in the minority in both tribes. Um, they go back to camp, and immediately you get Chris, which is the uh, the uh, actor, the model slash actor of <laughs> of our of, of the current. You know, it's like a quota they have to reach. They have to be one in every season. Otherwise, like there's gonna be like Jeff Probst will go to jail. <laughs> Mark Burnett will get sued. <laughs> So, so, so the Chris, douche, the douche he, per he, season, basically, Billy. Just let's yeah. all call him what he is, the douche. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, he he uh, starts plotting against Dominic, which he's been plotting for the for the three episodes here uh, against Dominic, and um, yeah, that seems to be like the focus on that tribe is basically Chris versus Dominic and how that's gonna play itself out over the next couple episodes. And I really um, like Dominic. I like. I just. I don't know. There's just something about him. Like he's one of the few that stand out to me. And you know, the Seth MacFarlane thing aside, but he's just. There's something about him, and I like that kind of reference. Where somebody mentioned, like, oh, he's like a Russell Hance. You know, he's he's swearing on his family. He's doing all this sort of stuff. Um, which I mean, I can kind of see it, but I think that he's more social and likable than Russell. I guess Russell early on wasn't exactly hated, but um, yeah, I I just really like him. And and Chris, he just yeah. He's he just comes across as like this douche bro guy, and you know he's probably a super nice guy in real life. And I I don't mean to speak ill will of you, Chris, if you're listening, but you're not listening because you're pretty and young and attractive. You're off like having a life, not listening to podcasts. Hello to all our listeners. Um, but I I yeah I just I don't like the way he kind of comes across as very condescending. The way he's sort of like saying like we need to get Dominic out, we need to do this, we need to do that, and. I don't, can't even remember which woman it was who was like, oh, he's like talking down on me. And I, I absolutely get that. And I think that, you know, to me, Chris isn't lasting as long in this game as Dominic just because I think he's going to rub people the wrong way more so than Dominic scheming, oh, look at my fake idol. I've got a real idol, you know, blah, blah, blah way. So, yeah, I, I'm not liking Chris, but I'm really liking Dominic. I'm thinking we're going to run into the same problem with both Chris and Dominic that we ran into with Jacob, isn't that they're, they're big characters and they're dominating all the screen time. They're not going to last long because it's it's the same issue they all have is that none of them are self-aware. Like Jacob's like, oh yeah, everybody bought my lie and everybody's like, nah, not buying it. And the same thing with Dominic is like, oh, I showed them this idol and they're like, ah, I don't trust this guy. Chris, this is our plan. No, I don't want to work with him. But yet all of them seem to think, yeah, everybody's behind me. And as soon as they're gone and both of these guys are probably going to go early, maybe Dominic can you know sneak by. But as soon as they're gone, I feel like we're, again, going to be just reset to zero. Like, who's our new character? And they've come out as strong characters so far this season. But I don't know if they're likable. I, I, I agree with you, Ben. That I, Dominic is one of the ones that I'm entertained by so far. Maybe just through lack of options. You know, Stephanie would probably be the other one. Um, Chris is, I mean, yeah, this is... He's the type of guy who's first boot. I mean, this is like Jonathan Libby. Um, it, it's it's every single douchey guy who just comes out so overly confident and is gone early. I, I don't see any chance of him lasting even one or two more episodes. I like Jonathan That's Libby, fair. though. Can I just say that? <laughs> <laughs> he played the game well. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, just on a just on a side note for record keeping, uh, it was it was Angela. The uh the twenty one year army veteran yeah. captain who uh who felt that uh, she was being talked to. Thank you. Even though, you know Yes, and and, and uh one of one of my favorite things about Angela, I'm gonna just throw this in, was this thing on her resume where she's like this uh this uh specialist who was like a, a psychological battalion, something or other. And I just looked at that and I'm like in my preseason, that's why I picked her as my winner's my winner pick. I was like, it sounds like she leads like an like like a like a platoon of uh, of like Manchurian candidates like into other people's country to overthrow governments or something. I don't know. It just sounded like crazy over the top. Maybe that's why so... she's on Survivor. Maybe it's a secret <laughs> ploy by the U.S. government to overthrow Fiji. Like it's like yeah, she's a contestant, guys. <laughs> just and they rig it so she gets to the end, and they're like, you know, special twist. Let's organize a coup against the Fijian government. <laughs> Hey, Mark Burnett, Donald Trump, they got a relationship. Yeah, you know, hey. there's some tie-ins there. Yep. yep. <laughs> All right. So over on the other tribe, uh on the uh uh on the, the new uh Net TV tribe, uh we had basically a uh a, a coming together of, of like 
two people that have the same religion or, or that was like the oh yeah we're catholic sisters that was libby and i believe morgan and so this kind of played into what would happen later uh when when they go to tribal council where morgan thought hey we have this super connection that we we both believe in the same religion and of course we're gonna stick together like like nuns all the way to the end <laughs> you know <laughs> As they often do. I mean, that's what I know about nuns, yeah, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Every time a nun has been on Survivor, they've formed an alliance with another nun. Yes. I mean, these are like nuns to the end here. It, 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 it really is like, you know, Boss and Robin Amber, like, never trust two nuns. Like, you know, like, you've got to break that pair up straight away. <laughs> yeah, so, so all right. So there was a lot of scheming on both sides, which I, I, I liked. At least people are playing the game. You know, the worst part is when they all sit down and complain about rice. Speaking of which, complaining, I guess the other big highlight of the the pre-immunity challenge was that our, our phys ed teacher was upset at Bradley for being such a whiner and such a, <laughs> such a I, I dare say, snowflake, I guess, is what he was <laughs> Oh, being. is that who Bradley was? <laughs> now oh, I know. that guy. <laughs> yeah, him, Bradley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Future yeah, all he was star. like, oh, the shelter, yeah, all this, all that. And I'm like, and I'm agreeing with it with with uh, our, our, our phys ed teacher. Like, they're on Survivor. They know they're going to suffer. What's to complain about? It's You don't get it much anymore, though, do you? Which is kind of, you know, what this game obviously has transformed into. It's all about strategy. We never get the survival aspect anymore. But it is kind of funny when you do get people complaining. And particularly this season, which is, isn't it meant to be filled with super fans? Like, I mean, we legitimately, we legitimately had an 18-year-old like, oh, this is James's idol. I remember watching this as an eight-year-old. Like, it's like, really? Yeah. Like, you know, like, you, <laughs> good on you. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's funny when you see it because this was the one, wasn't it, when they like initially get there and they're all like, oh, this camp's pretty good. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> was that the one where we had the confessional? And again, my names are just going so well on this season. And she's like, oh, it's like when you see yeah. your friend's baby and it's like, they think it's the cutest yeah. thing in the world, but it's actually so goddamn ugly. I love that confessional. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then they're finally starting to like, I'm like, oh, this tribe sucks. It's like, stop complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's been six days. Like, how could they suck that bad after six days? <laughs> Most tribes, you haven't even finished your shelter in six days. Like, what did they do wrong? <laughs> it's the ugly baby. It's, it didn't yeah. do anything. It was bored. Or it's the curse. <laughs> they've gotten, they've gotten like the Rupert curse from All Stars. Like, you know, that's, will you reverse the curse? Dig your shelter into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been better, actually. <laughs> What was a rapper so, who so comes he, along and tests it out, and he's like shaking on the roof, and he's like, "Oh, he shook yeah. it, shook his head, rapper bad." No, no, not good. <laughs> and you got Jerry in the back, just not worth it. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned you mentioned Michael. That was that was probably the final highlight there of the pre uh, of the pre uh, uh, it, it challenge moment. Uh, where he finds he finds James's idol, and what I love about it is in modern survival where everybody stuffs their f- fine down their pants. You have this ginormous yeah. idol <laughs> from China, <laughs> where, he, <laughs> where I'm like, where the hell is he gonna hide? And this? how obvious like, was got... that? Did you see where it was sitting? Like, I mean, was that was that being there the whole time? Because it was just sitting there. It's this freaking square wrapped in like cloth. And, like, it's just there. Like, I swear a producer's just gone, shit, Michael's coming, put the idol there. <laughs> because it just seemed too <laughs> obvious that nobody saw that until he saw that. And how does he smuggle it back into camp? Yeah. Like, where's he <laughs> stuffing this thing? That's the best part. Like, how do you keep that one a secret? So... <laughs> at least make it look phallic or something like that. Because, I mean, like, you know, at least you can be like, yeah, I'm Michael. <laughs> I'm I'm well endowed in the pants. Like I've got a big square dick. Like I mean, it doesn't exactly work. How did James hide this? Like I know he was a big guy, but they're like he went out with two idols in his back pocket. And I'm, I'm only years later I'm watching this. Like he didn't literally do that. You got to change the way you're phrasing that. Like even James is not hiding those things. Well, he like had well, like that, he was built. He had pecs though. Like I mean, he could have just yeah. like look how rock hard my pec is. He Come did, and tap it. No, he didn't have pecs. He just had two idols in his bra. <laughs> Well, well, in all fairness to James, back in those days, they had these big sacks that basically you put all your all your 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 different uh, sneakers for the different challenges, and uh, 
the the different t-shirts well not different t-shirts but you had a t-shirt you had a hoodie you had a long pants you had shorts so you had different stuff so he was able to like wrap it up in his clothing and may you know uh, and maybe in an era where idols were still brand new like it wasn't like the thing like it is now maybe people took it as oh he's just taking souvenirs well that's taking was... pieces of camp yeah, because that was like, that was really the first season, wasn't it? What, the third season where we really had, well, fourth season we had idols kind of fully in play. And I guess that was the first time we hadn't had, you know, just a necklace little dangly thing. Like this legitimately was, you know, who would have guessed at that point that that thing was an idol? And I remember that, you know, he got it and then didn't, was it Todd or was it, um, who was it who was ripping all the other ones off just checking them in case? Um, yeah, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, so, I mean, I think what was unique about China is that, yeah, like, as you're right, like, you can sort of get away with that because no one's guessing it, that that would be an idol at the time. So, I guess he could probably get away with it. But, yeah, like, this time around, though, like, there's, there was no hiding that idol. That, that was there. That was so goddamn obvious. And, like, it's, you know, I mean, we, we, when was the last season we had an idol clue that wasn't, you know, like, I know they kind of get clues when they go to, you know, rewards and stuff like that. But, you know, gone are the days when idols first started it. It was all about the clues. Nowadays, it's just, I'm going to yeah. go look for an idol. Oh, here's one. Like, yeah, I realize it's a lot longer than pitch that. It's black with yeah. no lights out. You know, the moon's covered with clouds and you're just feeling around a tree. It's like, here's one. Here's another one. Yeah. Yeah, so long as it's not moving and trying to bite at you, it's an idol. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. And soon and soon they probably will. This tarantula is an idol. Keep it in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, if you remember last season, the idol was just a shell on the floor. Yeah. So, <laughs> seashell on the floor. So, that makes this whole humongous idol that much more interesting, that mm. everybody's looking for it. And everybody's a super fan, so I think if they see it, they'll recognize it. Yeah. They should have a person That's as an idol. Thing. Like, make, like, kind of, like, have it, like, as Cluedo or Clue, I think you guys call it, where basically, you know, who's the murderer, who's that sort of stuff. Just, like, automatically, like the mole. Like, okay, you know, Donathan, you are the hidden immunity idol this season. Don't tell anyone. Um, like, <laughs> a person is the idol. Yeah, a person is the I want to play Donathan. <laughs> and just, just, like, this isn't an idol. Throws Donathan in the fire. Um, I don't so know. So, Ghost <laughs> Island 2... We're going to have Chris on there, or the, the whole gimmick is going to be, you know, Chris actually had the idol in his back pocket, but the idol was Dominic, and he was too obsessed with voting him out. <laughs> yes. Or hashtag bring back Billy, because Billy can just be an idol, just to yeah, go back yeah, and no. Survivor. Yeah, yeah, right? I was just about to say it would be great if, like, underneath the bill of, of Jeff Probst's cat, it, it says hidden, hidden me. Hey, that would be awesome. <laughs> Try and steal Jeff's hat. Yeah, yeah that would be great. You must jump Jeff on Jeff. <laughs> Jeff could literally, like, he could even pick who he wants to idol because he could, like, just look up real quick when he wants yeah. somebody Oh, what's upstairs? Oh, yeah. Because he doesn't wear one. At, he doesn't wear one at Tribal Council, does he? He should wear one to Tribal Council. And then the, the sneaky thing is, is before he snuffs your torch, you see it, and it's like the last minute. Oh, snap. Got it. Idle. Sorry. Don't snuff my Back torch. In the game. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. So there you go. We came up with a good one there. <laughs> yep. Yep. You're welcome, CBS. So, uh, we want trademark for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Our, our royalty check should be in the mail. <laughs> oh, just put um, Billy back on. So that, we get that to be our payment. Uh, yeah, that, that'll work. <laughs> so we get to the the immunity challenge, and I don't know how you guys felt, but that first part where they're jumping from from bridge to bridge to bridge, I guess is what oh, you yeah. call it. I, the first thing that came to my mind was like American Ninja Warrior. Like I've seen this every season of American Ninja Warrior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. You guys felt that way? Did you catch that? It was very parkour. It was like something out of Casino Royale. You know, I loved it. <laughs> it's it's interesting that because I mean the challenges to me really are the bits now where I just ultimately fade out the most. But um, whenever they do have something <laughs> where it's kind of, well, it's just. Challenges just to me are just so obsolete now, and they're just so repetitive that I legitimately. It is the moment where I will often just not pay as much attention as I used to. Um, because at the end of the day, I mean, what what purpose does it have except for the immunity? I mean, okay, that's a big part of the show. I get that. But, I mean, particularly in these early days when I haven't really started to really cheer or root for anyone, it just they're both the same to me. Both the tribes are kind of the same. So, <laughs> um, And then when we get to the individual portion, it's just, oh, some form of balance, you know, endurance challenge, which are all exactly the same, just slightly changed. So... 
I, I just always fade out of the challenges. So um, I think kind of what maybe they're expecting that. And, you know, I, I don't know how big Ninja Warrior is over there, but I mean, God, that was like the biggest show. And they did an Australian Ninja Warrior last year. It was like the biggest show on TV here. And they've started up a different nice. version called Spartacus, which is like with teams instead of individuals. I don't know. Channel 7 told us all about it during the Winter Olympics. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it's, I think kind of they need to go for something a bit more, bit more unique because that's the one thing that I said that the Australian version did do better than the US version um, is that our challenge is actually starting to become more unique and individual uh, compared to the US one whereas the US one are now literally just oh let's draw a rock from a bag and hope you've got the same one as your loved one like um, so yeah, yeah. Um, I, I didn't really pay overly a lot of attention to the challenges fair enough so uh... boo, Ben boo hoo <laughs> your local Australian version of Survivor is not good enough for your standards here in Canada, we don't even have a Canadian survivor. I'll take, like, the rock challenge. Well, I was about to say, if you're, like, complaining about it, at least we have a local version Canada, but uh, never mind. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so the challenge was that they did this parkour thing, like Colin mentioned, uh, very reminiscent of the Ninja Warrior. And then from there, they had to uh, dig up a ladder, which is probably the biggest thing that they've ever dug up in a survivor challenge before it's this long long step ladder and one side you we could plant on the other side you cannot because it was a point so you kind of had to figure it out as you're going that oh, okay we're gonna have to turn around this ladder and then the ladder you couldn't put brace up against anything everybody had to hold it while somebody climbed uh basically uh, uh i would say about 12 or 13 feet to the top of the ladder and unwrap a spool of, of, of rope and once uh they unwrapped the spool of rope they would make their to their make their way to the final stage of the challenge where they would throw the spool of rope and sort of catch it onto this to this V clamp and they would have to like repel upwards or climb upwards up the rope. And once they got up there, they had what I think was the most unique puzzle challenge that they've had on Survivor, at least recently. Where you're assembling an Easter an, uh, an Easter Island head, what, what, you know, is what it looked like to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm watching it now. I am actually flicking through it now, and um, <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't watch this properly. Um, this is this is I'm telling you why I would be terrible at Survivor too, because like yeah, I there's no way I could barely even climb up that wall at all. Like Billy, I mean, you and I are kind of very similar. I mean, do you think you would be able to handle challenges like this? Because I would be screwed. <laughs> you know what? The, uh, the climbing up the wall with the rope, so long as there's a rope, I did as a Marine all the time. Right. So my body knows how to do that. But the uh, the uh, holding up the ladder, like, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest, like, you know, if, if you never worked construction or something like that, you probably never did that in your life. So I, I would be relying on somebody who knows what they're doing to tell me where to stand, you know, because I, I wouldn't be able to brace, brace myself against a ladder and hold up a human being at the very top, I don't think. The closest I've ever so, been to a marine is uh, my birthstone is aquamarine, so that's about as close as I've ever been to uh, <laughs> being a marine. So um, no, no. But at least we did get a puzzle that was like Billy said, it's harder to solve because last week was like, can you put together the Survivor logo? You super fans <laughs> who have watched this and seen thirty-four <laughs> versions of this logo. 16 times per season do you know how to spell survivor and move these puzzles around so yeah give them something challenging like this one yeah for sure and the way it played out was basically uh the navidi tribe just lost because they couldn't you couldn't focus while they were tired they were so they were so beat up from the other part of the challenge that wendell especially just couldn't focus on what he was doing he was so so tired and huffing and puffing and he was you know he, he just he just basically blew the challenge just I'm put just, it bluntly i'm waiting for the the ringer challenge where it's like you know you must parkour across these platforms you must you know pull out this ladder and climb it up and then when you reach the top we need one of your team members to assemble an ottoman and then then wendell's got it and he's the hero <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you'd think that a person who does furniture for a living, <laughs> he would have just looked at this like, oh, this this is an Ikea, this is like an Ikea, of, uh, you, know, <laughs> you just put this together. Like. <laughs> they always suit that, don't they? They kind of like, you know, when Cliff, oh, let's just happen to have a basketball challenge, basketball. and um, like Sierra had the barrel rolling <laughs> challenge, like, yeah, where's the, you know, the Ikea challenge? Um, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, you have no idea how ticked off I was that I was eliminated right before the wrestling challenge. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn you, I2 tribe. <laughs> like, yeah, I get eliminated like just before the karaoke. podcasting challenge. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. So, so, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, Malolo wins. Malolo. You know, That's a uh, beautiful this, word, by the way. Yeah. yeah I, I totally love that agree. word. Malolo. They, yes. Yeah. I'm going to name my baby that Malolo Waterworth. <laughs> so, Malolo wins after going to tribal council two times. They, they, they win, even though it's technically half a Navidi. Um, and uh, they get to choose who to send to uh, to Ghost Island, and Jeff hits them with the with the bombshell that it has to be unanimous. I, I don't remember this being <laughs> the case. No. Why wasn't that the case? Like the first two, the first two times they sent somebody to Ghost Island. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was this? It felt like he pulled this one out of his ass. Just all of a sudden, you know what? This time it's got to be. Unanimous. He loves his rocks. He loves his rocks. He's like any opportunity we've got to use rocks. Everybody like challenge last season. Oh no, it's unanimous. Oh, it can't be unanimous. Oh, they have to draw rocks. Ghost Island. Woo. <laughs> I-, I can imagine Jeff Probst like, and just as he's about to walk over and he's arguing with the producers, and Jeff is like, "I'm an executive producer. Damn it, we spend ten thousand in our budget on these rocks. We are going <laughs> to use these damn rocks." <laughs> I personally painted this rock white, and it will get drawn by the end of this episode. The only reason it's not the purple rock anymore is because the purple paint had faded, and now it's white. So we have to make the most of this goddamn rock now. <laughs> oh, wow. So they couldn't, they couldn't come to an agreement, uh, and they basically told, told um, Malolo to, to pick rocks. And to my disappointment, I don't know how you felt, Chris, of all people, picked the White Rock. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he was gone. If if it had happened, there's a lot of times I think where they edit these episodes, like there's a chance, but there's no way around this. Chris was gone if he didn't draw that rock. And it, I, I don't dislike Chris or anything, but I mean, the other thing is that he shows up at Ghost Island. I mean, even if he had won an advantage there, would Chris have known how to use it? I mean, I just feel like <laughs> this entire thing was wasted. No, he just. The thing with Chris too, like, does he know how to smile? Like, I don't think once in this game I've seen him crack a smile. Like, he's just got this very stern, rigid face. Um, and like, you he know, was more was... upset than he thought. Ben, come yeah, on. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, <this laughs> him crying, you know, yeah, okay, it was a sweet moment. I'm not gonna, you know, talk down on that. But it's just, I don't know, just like, I swear he's the type of person where it's like, Chris, you've won Survivor. He'd just be like, I'm so happy. I'm so happy, Jeff. <laughs> so happy that I've won Survivor. This is the greatest day of my life. Like, he just has no, like, <laughs> facial personality. Can I just... I just really want to quickly say about Ghost Island, though, that, like, I, I had no idea what I was going to think about this twist. And it's kind of... It's still, I think, being worked into it. The thing that I'm really, really enjoying about it, though, is these throwbacks. So when they do find James's idol, here's a quick little flashback to what happened. You know, and last week, you know, this is what happened with Andrea. Here's the legacy advantage. Like, I'm, I'm kind of liking how they're tying that into it. And for the most part, we are genuinely seeing fans who are excited. Like, oh my god, I've got the legacy advantage. Here's my name. You know, here's Sierra's name. Here's Sarah's name. Like, it's just, it is, I, I kind of like how they're doing that. So I think this, this whole twist has potential. Um, I just think that this is just such a unique idea that on a show that's been on for this long, that they're able to celebrate its history like this, because I don't think we've really had a season doing that. Like, I know some of the all-star seasons try to do that with throwbacks to the challenges, but they kind of, they right. like, they like forgot about it halfway. I think all-stars really, when they had that trivia challenge was kind of a nice throwback to the earlier seasons, but, um, it's rare that they hold it up. So yeah, I just, I just wanted to have that opportunity. I haven't really had a chance to speak about this twist before and I just, I'm kind of enjoying that aspect of it at least. But yeah, fuck Chris. I was sad he didn't go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, I think that this could very well go wrong where everybody just has an advantage. And you know, we saw that play out last season near the end where it, it made it kind of fun. But if this gets to the point where everybody's got an idol, everybody's got an advantage and everybody's playing, I mean, it, it could very easily turn into a mess of a game, but they seem to be countering that with, you know, you have nothing. Thanks for playing or whatever those are. My question is, is that they're doing these in order. Do they have to do them in order? Because if they so. do, I mean, that, it's just they're going up there and they're choosing, okay, I'm going to choose the second one. I'm going to choose the third one. And now we've got two episodes in a row with nothing happening. And 
in a show like this, I think you really want to sell this uh, this twist. And you want to sell this advantage in the early episodes. And it's going to reach a point if somebody next week gets a thanks for playing Clue, the audience is just simply going to forget what the whole plot here is. And I kind of think well, see, that was getting to you. That's you got Billy. No. Oh, thank you, thank you, Joe Shark. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're the executive producer, but uh, <laughs> uh, I was just going to say that was kind of my my pet peeve is that twice in a row now the theme of you know this is the theme of the season is Ghost Island, and twice in a row. We got nothing happening at Ghost Island. So that was my pet peeve. <laughs> it's the theme. It's so and the same, Ben. Yeah, I'll just one gonna... advantage that actually... I'll, I'll go, Ben. <laughs> go, Colin. <laughs> uh, the one advantage that somebody's actually gotten so far, it, it's already been wasted. It's already gone. And it's got to yeah. be willed to somebody else. It's it's interesting, though. Like This is kind of the first island season where... Because generally, like, on Exile and, and Redemption... I mean, Redemption's a bit different, but, like at least with Exile, everyone kept getting... The same person kept getting sent back. Because like, they were like, oh, well, they may as well go. They'll they'll get the clue. So it's, it's kind of interesting that I... Like, with that change this week, where it's like, oh, it's got to be unanimous. Um, that Does that work, do you think, to a favour? I guess it's different because you'll save every vote. But, I mean, at the same time, like, if they took that part away from it, like, maybe send them between the reward challenges, I guess, like they used to do with Exile. Um, and then that way, keep sending the same person so that you know they're the only ones with the advantage. I don't know how that would work. It's probably a dumb idea because then they could end up with 30 different advantages. But, um, it's, it's kind of interesting, particularly that first one where, um, like, I think Jacob expected to be sent back when obviously he wasn't because right. at that point when you didn't know what Ghost Island was, you would assume that's probably the smart thing to do. But, um, yeah, I guess it's kind of interesting that we're not seeing that this time around because, you know, I guess it's, it's different to Exile Island where, you know, there could be a thousand and one different advantages and you're kind of immune from the vote. So I'm I'm hearing it in my head that my idea was dumb. So I'm just going to shut up right now. <laughs> you're not much of an executive producer. If that's the no. best to come up with. I don't think I'm ever coming back on the show again. <laughs> oh. I will say this, that I hope at some point that when they go to Ghost Island, maybe that final urn, when that final urn gets smashed, like the big twist will be that instead of it being... Uh, a ghost from a past season, it'll be like an advantage nullifier where you, you walk in the tribal council, yeah. every advantage that gets played, you nullify it all at once, but you only get yeah. to play it that one time. Or it's Billy so, Garcia. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I'm hoping that'll be the case. Anywho, so, so N- Navidi goes to tribal council and in what in my opinion, it looked like Angelica, for whatever reason, did a sidestep and threw her vote away on Libby. Um, that's what I, it looks like to me. The, the 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 team that was in the minority actually took out one that was in the majority because Chris was in Ghost Island, and like I mentioned, Angel- uh, or, yeah, Angelica, she uh, she took the, the the sidestep. So I found that interesting that Morgan, who they didn't even know had it, in, or maybe they did know, who, who did know. Um, maybe Jacob. someone did know. I gotta go back and check. <laughs> Jacob knew. Jacob knew. Oh, but she told Stephanie. I wonder if Stephanie, who's on the other tribe, told anybody that ended up on on the new the new Davidi. That would but be did interesting. We, did we see? We didn't see any sort of mention of it, did we? Because it was he 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 he, he basically spilled his, Jacob spilled his guts to Stephanie before leaving. True, but did um yeah did we see any mention of it this week though? But with Morgan having it. Or was that that was last week? I can't even remember. They, they they did a they did a they did a previously on Survivor and they mentioned they, they showed the the actual the actual advantage being willed to, to Morgan. Right. Yeah, see, I skipped the previously on Survivor part, and when what? she was voted out, I was just like, okay, well, I don't know who she is, and my <laughs> wife was like, wait, she was the one with the legacy advantage, right? I'm like, was she? Like, and it wasn't mentioned at all in the episode, and I had to really think to go back. I'm like, oh, yeah, she was. So it, maybe they could have made a bigger deal. But that's I guarantee the next episode starts, th- the first scene is, this is who I'm willing it to now. Well, they, she did mention in her exit interview that she willed it to Dominic. Mm. So so Dominic has a real idol. He has a fake idol. And now he has the real legacy advantage. So, so yeah, that's starting to pile up for, for Dominic. If he gets sent to Ghost Island next... Holy smokes! Like, <laughs> that that that'll be just too much. Power. You know what would be great though? Now this just jumped into my head literally right now. You know that it, it when you get to play 
if you lose, you you lose your vote on the next uh, the next uh, tribal council that you go to. Mm-hmm. How about instead of if you lose your vote, you lose all your advantages? Yeah, mm. yeah, you build them up and then it's gone. And, and then it's, it's gone. Or you how about too many risks? How about instead of you smash the urn, you don't get to play. You get like some really lousy souvenir from the past. Like here's Dan Foley's underpants that washed <laughs> into the ocean. <laughs> Hey, I'd I'll, I'll <laughs> gladly wear them. <laughs> the, the, can I just ask oh. a quick question? Just with Morgan, I actually sort of liked her from what we saw. Um, and, you know, the fact that it was kind of, you know, ultimately, I guess, a blind. I loved her reaction when she went out. Uh, she's the third Morgan to play this game. Uh, where would you rank her up against Morgan McDevitt and Morgan McLeod or the entire Morgan tribe on Pearl Islands? <laughs> You know, I'll go with the Morgan tribe on Pearl Island. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I personally go Morgan McLeod. If you two don't want it, I'll have it. That's fine. Um, but uh, <laughs> just putting my hand up to volunteer there. But, uh, you know. <laughs> it was interesting on her way out. She pretty much was like uh, letting everybody know that Libby Libby played her. I love that. Don't trust the cute little blonde. <laughs> and then the way she like was yeah. that was Libby, wasn't it? Where she was like, "Oh, puts her hand in her head, like just own your move." <laughs> yeah. That's one thing I don't like about like on Survivor, like own your move, like don't act all sheepish and all like you know, oh shit, I shouldn't like because to me that just shows weakness. To me, I think you should be owning your move at that point. You pulled it off, you blindsided it, you did what you want to do. Sure, you might regret it, but like don't necessarily show that in public. Like say that for a confessional, be like, "Oh fuck, I really shouldn't have done that." But like I don't know, I just I don't know if I'm just you know being the Monday morning quarterback here and saying it's easier said than done, like with a regretful move like that. But to me, it's just a case of she's been called out in front of the entire tribe, and she she acted that way. I don't know personally. I think you should just sit there with your head held high and be like, "Yep, that's what I did." You know, was it Jay a couple of seasons ago, like when um Michaela got voted out, like you did that, and he's like, "Yep," <laughs> like yeah. You know, well, it, I just say it. Go ahead. Go ahead, Colin. Go ahead. Your show, Billy. <laughs> Shut up, Ben. <laughs> Billy's talking. Yeah, everyone, shush, Billy. Well, Billy's just, listening, talking. <laughs> I'll just say that it's a fine line between being confident and owning your move and seeming smug and arrogant. It's True. a fine line. So True. so, so maybe maybe what, what Libby was trying to do is, like, bury her face so she, she doesn't, like – Give away like the yeah, I took that bitch out look on her face, you know. It might not just be steepest. It might be she doesn't have a poker face. She doesn't want to show anything. Just cover her face. Well, it's, it's definitely a season I think where people are easily buying into things. Uh, as in, sorry, like saying like oh they're they're like you know the fake idol uh, straight away. Like Chris is like oh yeah I'm not buying this, and then like with Jacob oh yeah I'm not buying this. So like it really seems to be a case where these people are more astute with these sort of things and are quickly saying like oh I'm not buying that. So it's going to be interesting to see what her initial reaction was. I mean she seemed genuine, like she legitimately seemed she regretted it. I I if she was faking that. Uh, and she comes back next week. It's like, yeah, the bitch is gone. I hope you all believe me that I was upset. Like, <laughs> good on you. I'll maybe switch my opinion. Like, she legitimately seemed like she regretted doing it. But um, all right, yeah, it's interesting. I think the the smart move here, though, probably would have been to take out Angela because everybody really wanted Chris out. Now, by keeping Angela in the game, you've kept at least one person that is loyal to Chris for whatever reason, who's going to stick with him, and. Mm. We're 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 in this. This was the tribe, if, if I'm right, that was five and four, right? Yes. For the all of them. Both of them are. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say both so, are, aren't they? Even if you get one of the other ones out, you know, somebody from the other side, you're still pushing it now as four four in the future. So you want that advantage. Why are you gonna leave two people who are not going to side with you, who you already know are gonna be, you know, ganging up against you? It it seemed like Angela would have been the much smarter move to make. Well, Angela sidestepped. Remember, she wrote Libby. So there's a possibility that she sold out. Mm. Oh, the Angela's on their side. Yeah, there's a possibility she sold out and she sidestepped. She wrote down Libby. So she took her vote out of the equation, allowing Mm. the four to vote to vote against three instead of it being uh, four on four with uh, Chris being at the at, at Ghost Islands. So it, it, it seems like she sidestepped. So maybe the whole Chris barking orders has backfired on the majority. Mm-hmm. And now that he wasn't around to keep her in line uh, or, you know, or, or maybe it didn't even matter if he would have been around. She, she was already not, not feeling being, being told what to do that. She totally 
like might have went to the other side. Which is and always maybe that's going to be the other first scene that we get you know, yeah. when the next episode starts explaining it. But it kind of would have helped in this episode so you're not left scratching your head because when this ended, I was just like dying to get to where they reveal the votes on the end to see, well, who voted for who? How did this actually happen? And then when I saw it, I was almost more confused. Mm. It's always interesting, I think, when you see – um, also the reactions of like the people coming back, like we saw with Donathan this week, he didn't give a fuck who went home. Did he even know where he was? Yeah. <laughs> so like, and here's Donathan getting his first look at his tribe. And he's just like, Hey y'all, Hey y'all, Hey y'all. Like, it's, it's like <laughs> Jacob's gone. Like, you know, so, but I can, I can definitely see Chris is kind of the type of person who's just going to come back and be like, what the fuck did you do this? And you know, yeah. Just yeah. Bubble. Yeah. It, well, I think when they come back to camp, the question is going to be like, who, who voted Libby? Mm-hmm. Who stepped out of line? Who who mm-hmm. who who basically broke ranks? Who the hell voted for me? Did with the army? <laughs> 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 so so yeah, it's gonna be well. No, Libby is probably probably volunteered to have that vote go on her just so she could take herself out of the equation. I want them, I want them to have that as a curse thing. I want them to have that, like, bring it back, like, have a little thing in a bag, and it says, like, you have received one surprise vote. You can either A, act like Lex, or B, act like Rupert. <laughs> Which do you choose? <laughs> Reverse the curse. <laughs> Fair play! <laughs> and Lex just walking around, you know, little innocent, you know, Angela, oh, it wasn't me, like, pulling a T-bird, and then, you know, somebody just gets the Kelly victimised, uh, you know, bit with Lex's for blood, but then, like, you know, just <laughs> coming back to camp, pulling a Rupert and, you know, trying to, like, choke someone, <laughs> so just like, hello, vote <laughs> for me! <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you know, so yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of also interested since we've had two ex- uh, I keep wanting to call it Exile Island, two Ghost Islands in a row where there was no no anything that happened. Um, what would be the next Ghost item that you could win? It's gotta, mm. you know, there's gotta be a good one because we already seen like you mentioned Andrea's idol, we mentioned the uh, the uh, the James idol, we have the uh, the Sierra Legacy advantage. What would be the next item? that they would have to bring back, I especially think, at this stage of the game. I think no matter what, they will have the it's a fucking stick. Surely that's got to be there because <laughs> they've showed that like three times. So I think that's going to be there. I feel like maybe one of these fake idols might be sort of used as a real idol, like a Yao Man or a Bob Crowley sort of one. Uh, but I also feel like one of the um, like the Dan Foley double vote or who else had that one as well, um, you know, the, the vote where you can have two votes, that's got to be there uh, at some point. Um... But, I mean, what are some of the other unique ones that they can have? Like the, the Yule Power Idol, you know what I mean? Like this, you know, the Tony super sort of Super Idol, idol. Yeah. you know, surely maybe one of them or the two that kind of form together on uh, on Ko Rong. So, um, How, How's yeah. this for an idea? How's this for an idea? How about the Pearl Island, all the vote-outs come to play oh. to, to get one back in the game? <laughs> or, or just, yeah, like the, just the, the outcast twist. I, look, I honestly would think that would be great. Like, I, I actually don't mind the Pearl Island's outcast twist. I think it's kind of interesting. Oh, get um, off this podcast, Oh, man. go away, you <laughs> moppy head man with that picture that obviously that guy you're or, talking or, about. Or... Or the Cook Island mutiny twist. Yes. <laughs> where you step off the, and you know, you, you basically get to go to the other tribe if you want to, but instead of doing it in front of everybody, you'll get to do it at Ghost Island, where you, you win your advantage, and the advantage is you get to mutiny. You get to stay, either That'd stay with your, your tribe or go to the other. Thailand fake merge, um, you know, just something like yeah, that, see, or one world well, live on I the same beach. Did. That's what I would have did in the Cook Islands. When when it's, you had a chance to mutiny, I'd have told my entire tribe, everybody step off the mat. We're merging. Yeah. <laughs> that seems a clever idea to do that, really, isn't it? Like, fuck production. We're, we're dictating when this merge is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting to think about all the things that they could do, really, with it, is it? Because, I mean, I yeah. think through all the... It's, it's all well and good bringing back these idols, and, like, I guess it seems to be a case of they're using these prop idols more of a case of, like, hey, James had two... Andrea got this happen. So it's kind of, it is that sort of legitimate curse sort of style thing, which, I mean, if you kind of want to read into the quote curses, I mean, this legacy advantage is sort of curse, isn't it? The two people have had it have been voted out. So, um, I, I for one just, and I don't think they'll do it because I think Dalton Ross sort of posed the question to Jeff 
in the pre-stuff and he didn't really seem that it was going to happen unless Jeff had a great poker face. He's the car curse. And to me, that's the ultimate curse of Survivor. Ah. So um, we haven't had it since Fiji. So I I personally think they should bring that back. It would be fantastic to see it. Do a sort of a, a Cindy situation where it's like, you can keep the car or you can give every single other person a car to get rid of this curse. So right. that's the one that nice I one. really hope they bring back, but I doubt they will. Uh, the one I want to see brought back is actually the Sari fine print curse. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> oh, awesome, yeah. Ray. You know, doesn't matter what the rest of the, the advantage is. I just want really tiny fine prints on it. <laughs> and if you don't follow the specific instructions for, you know, point from, from one, two, three, or ABC, the way, the way it's got to be done, then you totally blow it and you didn't read the fine print and you're now you repeated the curse. Yeah, like or like a Kimmy style one where basically you know no matter what happens, if all of a sudden they quickly go unanimous, bye bye Kimmy. You know it's yeah, poor Kimmy and Sari. I'm still not over both those votes in the last few years. <laughs> well, let me ask you, Colin, since uh uh, I think I think this is this is one that as a as as a as a fan and somebody who uh who uh is very very into the strategic side of things. What if they bring back the for even if it's just for one week? The Eric Reisenbach uh, individual immunity, where you could take it off and put it on somebody else. <laughs> Ooh, uh, I was. You know what I would really like? Because I want something where, uh, like, like Tony and and um, Brains Bra and Beauty, where whatever advantage you have only works to the final five, but you can tell everybody it's final four. Yeah, mm, or a okay. spy shack. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we have that listener who keeps sending in those ideas, don't we, about the whole, like, um, which would you choose if you were on Reward Island boat or whatever it was. Um, so, yeah, I mean, some of those ideas are legitimately fantastic. But, um, yeah, it's it, you know, I think that would be unique. Like, I, this is all about revisiting the past and reversing the curse, all that sort of stuff. It's great. But, like, it would be great if they came up with their own sort of, like, new, completely, you know, like, okay, we've revisited all of these. Now it's time to create our own sort of, like, one moving forward, like, the you know, most unique sort of thing that they can come up with. So, um, yeah, and, and I wonder if they're going to play up, because we know that the final four, again, is going to be the whole, like, you get to choose someone to take to the end and the other two make fire building, right? So you wonder if they're going to play that up as kind of a like, oh, well, this reverse a curse, you must choose wisely. Because from what I'm aware, these people wouldn't have seen the finale of uh, Heroes, Healers, Hustlers, so they wouldn't have known that that was a thing. So, um, yeah, you wonder mm. if they're going to play that into the whole reverse the curse notion because Jeff obviously said that's right. going to be a thing this season. So, yeah. Right. So how's this? As you said, come up with a new, with a, with something new. How's this? How about an idol, a, 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 a hidden immunity? That's idol new. An idol, that... a hidden immunity idol. That sounds like something <laughs> no, new. But, 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 but wow, one, but what's one, that, Billy? That's like that's electronic and it has to be vibrating for it to be used. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like more fun than anything. <laughs> Yeah, when it's not vibrating, you're at a tribal council. Well, it doesn't work. <laughs> when it is vibrating, or even better, lit up, because then you can't even hide it. <laughs> but then, but then, production would have too much say in that, though, wouldn't they? Like, oh, they, they would. They, you know, Chris has the idol. Yeah, We're not they, lighting it up tonight, but you know, Donathan does lighting it up. Or, or you know, instead of having the the, the two halves idol, like you, you have to find two halves, maybe have one that it's a puzzle. And yeah. until you, you solve the puzzle, the idol doesn't work. Or like five people have pieces, and then you somehow have to work out who's oh, going to use it. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, I, I still stand yeah. by I still I love your idea, Billy, with Jeff Prope's hat. I think that's unique. But, uh, the, I hat, also, the, hat, the hat trumps everything. Yeah. I, I love the person. I think they should make a person an idol. You know? <laughs> Just like... <laughs> Jeff Prope's is the idol. Oh. I like to play Jeff Prope's, thanks. All right. So I got to ask you guys, do we buy this, do we rent this, or do we bin it, this episode? Do you want to go first, um, Colin? <laughs> yeah. I mean, here's the thing. There's stuff to enjoy in this episode. I thought the Tribal Council was good, but maybe because, you know, the two big characters were the two first vote-outs last week, and I'm just I'm struggling to find out what the alliances are. And doing the, the Tribe Shuffle this early just sort of left me – not knowing who was on whose side and everything, and then taking Chris out of play. I just don't feel like this episode went the best way it could have gone. 
And okay. I'm not saying like, oh, let's script it differently. Like it's it's I, I want a reality show. I want it to be unpredictable and everything. But I, I just wasn't loving anything in this episode. So I'd probably bin this one, even though there is some wow. good stuff in it. Wow. Okay. Wow. I wasn't expecting you to be in it. If Jacob I... was in it, it would be a rent. <laughs> to me, it's a low rent. I mean, like, I'm sort of... There was nothing to me really stood out where I'm like, this is, like, you know, amazing. But I'm sort of on the opposite. There's nothing really to me that I would want to bin it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a low rent for me. It's not one of the greatest episodes of Survivor ever. And I think kind of similar to what Colin said in terms of the fact that I'm just not really getting into a lot of these people. It's just, you know, it's it's kind of just a bland start. I know people were sort of saying that this time last season with Heroes, Healers, Hustlers, and I was the opposite. I was loving it. So, I, again, I don't know what the fan reaction is to this season. I haven't seen any comments online. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a low rent for me. Um, I'd say for me it's a rent, but I, I like the cast. It's just in this particular episode, the people that I liked most were downplayed the most, like Stephanie Johnson, was oh, somebody oh. I really liked the last time. And Donathan with his accent, like he could read the phone book and it'd be entertaining to me. But we didn't. And we hardly got any, yeah subtitles. <laughs> but we we hardly got any of Donathan in this episode. So the people that I was liking, like, was totally like hardly in. Yeah. So for that reason, but I did like the uh, the Easter Island head as the puzzle for the for the challenge. <laughs> I, I thought that was unique, and uh, the aesthetics of this season, like especially the voting booth, like that's to me the oh, biggest. Oh, that looks booth awesome! Yeah. Agree. Agree. So the aesthetics of this season is kind of it's kind of keeping me to where it's you know it's it's still the third episode so I'm not over it yet I'm still going whoa that's cool oh <laughs> man they should show more of that so maybe maybe a few more episodes in I'll be like all right all right come up with something you know? <laughs> but, uh, right now I'm good with rent yeah I'm 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 just going to totally agree with Billy I mentioned this earlier at this point Stephanie is the standout character. And I don't even know if necessarily she's going to be the most likable character ever, but she's interesting and she's different and she doesn't seem like, you know, a put on. And I think that's the one thing with Dominic, as fun as Dominic is, you do get that vibe of, you know, he's out there playing a character. Uh, You know, he knows why he's cast. He's playing up to it. You just get Stephanie is kind of weird and she's semi brilliant um, and just completely different from players we've seen in the past. Yeah, I love Stephanie. Um, She's her... Uh, I like Dominic, uh, Donathan, of course, and I actually kind of like James whenever we see the guy, which is never. <laughs> um, but what we have seen of him, I like James. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's down to earth. I, I will say this about Dom- Dominic. There was a-, a few times when he's done confessionals where I'm like, I- I, you know, I- I'm ready to name this guy like the the Long Island Slayer instead of the Dragon Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that. He's got that. Like like Colin mentioned, he's he's like playing a character, mm. like 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 coach, like 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 uh, Benjamin uh, Wade played. He's playing the the uh, the whole Dragon Slayer thing, but it's a different take on it. It's that deep. Hey, forget about it, New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what I get from it. So it's a different take on that character. We finally it, got somebody it... on this show who can do a New York accent. Hooray. Thanks, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> it took a New Yorker to do it. But yeah, just it. a New Yorker, but <laughs> we finally got to... Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, was rooting, I was rooting in my preseason for all the New Yorkers, because there's so many of this season, to get together and take everybody out. <laughs> and uh, instead, they're at each other's throats, damn it. <laughs> have, you, have you met any of this cast yet? No, no, because I, I am, I am someone who does not like spoilers. Mm. Someone spoils even just a little bit. I'm like, damn you, you ruined the whole scene. Wait a second, <laughs> but you're tight with Sandra. How do you, how do you speak to Sandra and not get it spoiled? <laughs> well, she knows me already. She knows, she knows already. Uh... I, I don't want the spoilers, but, <laughs> but. You know, Sandra, Sandra, Sandra. I can get loud too. So you, know. <laughs> you meet Sandra. She legitimately within two seconds. Hi, how you been? You want no spoilers? <laughs> no, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've got a lot of listener questions to get to here uh, for the second week in a row. So thank you to all the listeners. Uh, so we're going to start out with Louisa, who uh, made this comment. Billy, have you ever met the legend that is Sue Hawk? And the answer is, I, I, I met her at the uh, at the tenth anniversary. That was my only time meeting her. And let me just say, it was literally a, a we're not worthy moment, like in the old Wayne's World. We're not worthy. 
But I'll admit I was like super drunk because it was free booze like all night long. And so was Sue, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> That's my dream tag team, Billy Garcia and Sue Hawk. Oh, Whoa, it's the duo yeah. we didn't know we needed to have. There it is. Yes. Uh, Sue. Yeah, there it is. Blood versus no, water three. <laughs> just pretend you're like, I don't know, husband and wife or mother and daughter or... You know, and just go in there. Mother and daughter? Do- pretend you're mother and daughter? <laughs> yeah. that's It's 2018. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will say, Sue Hawk was very gracious because I-, I know what I'm like when I'm drunk. <laughs> and, you know, um, you're the best player of all time, and I so love you. Yeah, oh, my God, I can't believe you. <laughs> I wasn't and sort of drunk, Jeff. And then two seconds later, you saw like Rudy and said the same thing to him. Then you saw Kelly Wigglesworth said the same. Oh, so fucking great, love you. Well, even drunk, I knew not to get too close to Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> He'll bite your head off. <laughs> this guy in a skull no, shirt hanging. came up to me in a homosexual yeah. <laughs> way. <laughs> so uh, we got Craig Lowe. This time I got your name right, Craig. Sorry about last time. <laughs> You think it'd be a name that easy, I would be able to pronounce it. But but between me being Hispanic and being a New Yorker, that accent just butchers words all the time. John <laughs> so, Smith. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, the comment is, Ben, what was it like to meet the amazing Des and Andrew in person? Uh, it was fun. It was a good night. Um, Des is exactly what you think Des would be, uh, for American people who don't know, or Canadians and people who don't know the Australian Survivor. <laughs> Des was, uh, first boot on, uh, the third season, like in 2016, and just this real, like, blokey Australian guy sounds like this, and just, you know, I, when I interviewed him, I think he drank about 10 cans of beer, and he barely was even tipsy. Nice. Um, but yeah, he was just absolutely, and like, just hilarious. And Andrew was super great too. Like, uh, Andrew was incredibly nice. Uh, he actually based, we got to like about 11 o'clock at night. I had to catch a train back to my place and he's all like, Oh, I think maybe I'll, I don't like that train line at night. Uh, you know, I might, uh, you know, we'll Uber back to my house and then we'll, uh, I'll drive you home. I was like, oh, okay, thank you. Um, very nice house Andrew has, by the nice. way. Uh, like, like me, he doesn't like spiders. There was a spider on the uh, garage door and, you know, we just, Try to stay away from it. Um, but it was funny because, like, we were driving. This is like, I don't know, one o'clock in the morning by this stage. And Des is just like, is there a bottle shop open or, you know, a pub? I need to get some more beer. And it's like, Des, it's one o'clock in the morning. Like, you've had enough. But, uh, Riley, former Ozzets Riley and Julian also were there in the night too. So, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was a good night. Des and Andrew are awesome people. You're like, I love Des. I loved Andrew. Riley and Ju- uh, Julian were there too. They're all right. <laughs> both, I've met both of them before. Come on. <laughs> well, well, let me say this in case Des, in case Des is listening, come to New York at one a.m. Oh. The party's just getting started. <laughs> you two would hit it off. Can I just say that, like Des and just Des and Billy, the other pairing, I didn't know we needed to have. Like that is just. He's just yeah. He's a, he's a funny funny person. He's just hilarious. Awesome, awesome. So Melinda had this comment. Uh, Hi, Ben. How has your move to Queensland been? And did you uh, think of what did you think of Jacob last week? I think we kind of covered Jacob, but hmm. uh, how was your move to uh, to Queensland? I'm so I glad all these all these um, listeners that I made up and sent questions in have come through. So I'm glad that um, <laughs> we can talk about me for this final uh, part of the uh, session. Um, it's fucking hot. Um, I mean, like, for the last <laughs> four days, it's been, like, low 20s and raining. It's great. Um, but, you know, the first week, it's, like, you know, high 20s. And it's just a humidity here. It's, like, Queensland's kind of like Australia's Florida, I guess. Um, so it's just, it's just constant. And the difference, I guess, between Queensland and Tasmania, if we had a hot day in Tasmania, it would cool down by, like, 7 o'clock. And you're fine. You never had a hot night. Whereas here, when I was out with everybody on Saturday night, we stepped out of the bar it's like, you know, 11 o'clock at night, and it's like, oh, somebody turned the heater down. Like, Jesus Christ, what is this? Like, it's so... But, um, yeah, it's, it's fine. I, I I feel like a local, sort of. Uh, I think my second head has gone away. Um, and, yeah, it's 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 a nice place to be. It's, it's a beautiful area, this park. Because, Billy, you've been here too, haven't you, to Queensland? So you've... I love Queensland. I've told my family many, many times that, like, if if... 
Like, the USA ever turned to shit, we're moving to Queensland, Australia. Yeah. <laughs> we're, 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 we're gathering all the cousins, all the aunts and uncles, <laughs> and uh, we're, we're going to kick in the, uh, the Led Zeppelin immigrant song, and we're coming <laughs> to move to Queensland. <laughs> it's it's, it's the, the beautiful... The beautiful thing about this part, too, is because kind of like where Brisbane is, I'm sort of halfway between Brisbane and the Gold Coast. So it's kind of like everywhere you go, you throw a rock and there's a beach. And like last night I went out for dinner with a friend sort of down the coast on the Gold Coast. And it's just kind of like, you know, beach, 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 beach. Because this is all the postcards you see of Australia is just generally the Gold Coast and the beaches and the high rises and all that sort of stuff. So uh, it's all kind of hectic stations as everybody's preparing for the Commonwealth Games at the moment. But um yeah, I mean it's it's a, it's a beautiful part of the world, and yeah, it's it you can see sure. why it's it's so popular where people visit here. So, how did either of you choose Queensland over Winnipeg, Manitoba? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Uh, to be honest, it is effing cold. <laughs> Colin, I would take the weather in Winnipeg over the weather in Queensland. I'll tell you that. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> I'll just say, man, I, I I've never been to Winnipeg. But I've been to Toronto in the middle of winter, and, you know, I thought it was like, yeah, it's a major city, you know, so what, it's probably going to be the same as New York. No. <laughs> it was much, much colder. It's... There were parts of me shriveling up that I don't want to admit to. <laughs> and that's the tropics for Canada. <laughs> yeah, that's summer. Exactly... Well, the Canadians are walking around in their shorts and t-shirts going, oh, hey, this is lovely weather. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Jillian... Uh, awesome. She says, "No, no, no. Jillian Smart." <laughs> Jillian Sorry, Smart. Jillian Smart. That's a good one. Though. <laughs> what did Ben? What is oh, everything is for Ben and none for Colin? I'm sorry, Colin. Oh, <laughs> Colin, do you want to answer either. this one? We got a celebrity <laughs> on here, and Ben's getting the questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did Ben think of the first episode of Ghost Island compared to the last season's uh, opening three? I'm going to let Colin answer that one because I feel Colin needs to have a question to answer here. Yeah. Um, ben thought it was... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, seriously, Colin, you answer your opinion. I don't have an opinion on it. Oh, look, I'll uh, just quickly say I enjoyed it, but it was not as good as last season there. Yeah, I'm going to agree. I mean, I don't know what some of the hate was about last season having a slow start. I thought last season had a great start. This one's a little bit slower, but maybe it is just trying to get used to that whole two-tribe thing again. But uh, it, it's not terrible. But last season, I really loved. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I guess I'll throw in my two cents. Uh, to me, there's no last thing Billy. Bad... <laughs> right. <laughs> no, no, there's no such thing as a bad season of Survivor. But I do think there's so much to, yeah. <laughs> there's so much to 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 gather with this season with all the twists. Where this this season, if you win, you'll get all of this. If you lose, you'll get all of this. But it, you have to you have to chicken out in order to get all of this. Otherwise, you'll get half of what we promised you just now. And it was so it was so so much to take in that I was like, huh? What? 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 Say, I'm Espanol. What? <laughs> <laughs> So that was my take on it. Uh, Gene, I'm happy to see Colin back on the recaps. Welcome Yay, back. Yay, Colin! <laughs> they got Colin's message too. Good on you, Colin, for sending in a question this week. I'm glad your alias Gene <laughs> yeah. got through. So he asked, on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest, uh, is this season the best new player season in five years? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gene. I will get my opinion to myself there. <laughs> Scale of one to five of the last five years. We're talking one, one ten, to ten. One, one to, to ten. ten. So the last five years. Where is it of the last ten seasons? We're basically saying of the the first three episodes. Yeah. Um, uh, let's say two. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I would have gave it a three, one for every episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really interesting, though, to think that with the new ep- the new player seasons, because I think it's all but confirmed that at least the next two or at least one season is going to be new players. So you you would realistically think that we wouldn't maybe get a returning player season until season 40, and they'll probably do some big, massive celebration for that. So if we have this run from 35 to 39, 
uh, that will be the longest streak of new player seasons since the first six seasons. And that's incredible to think that, that we have not had a stretch that long of all new player seasons. So I kind of hope that they do it. I, I, I mean, I like the returning player seasons, uh, but again, I'm more of a, I like a full returning player seasons. And I think kind of an, a full all-star season has sort of lost its, um, you know, aura slightly since we had two really yeah. within, close to each other. But, um, I, I hope that we can maintain new player seasons all the way up to season 40, just so we've got a new pool of players. And if we get like 40s legends or whatever the hell it will be. Um, yeah. So that's interesting that that will be six in a row, just like the first six seasons. It's been that long. How's this for an idea? Jeff Probst should stick his hand in a bag and he pulls out a white rock. It's a returning player season. <laughs> yeah, if he pulls out the black rock. Mark, we've got to use the rocks more. <laughs> That's how Rupert ended up on this four times because he kept drawing the white rock for Rupert. And that's why it's always 90% white people because he just gets the white, oh, white people again. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what happened, right? With, with, with my season, they were like, you know what? No, we we better not bring back any any more Hispanics, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that, this was a bad idea. We, you know, I don't know what we were thinking. I <laughs> Billy got all See right. Ya? Boo. Then Billy came out and proposed to somebody on television. <laughs> build a wall. Build a wall. <laughs> you want to bring Billy back? We build a wall. <laughs> Again, Mark Burnett and Donald Trump are close. See, like it was all your fault, Billy. Like... <laughs> all right. So Sasha. Has a has a little game she wants uh, us to play here: a kiss, hug, slap, run away, or wrestle. I'm glad Kristen's That's on a lot. the show. Oh, she wouldn't play. Oh, nice. wrestle! Yeah, we added wrestle. Yeah, I guess because of me. Uh, so kiss, kiss, hug, slap, run away, or wrestle. So we're gonna throw we're gonna throw some names out here. So uh, I guess we'll start out with with uh, some some of the ladies here before we go to some of the guys because I think uh, no slapping. some of the ladies are interesting. Yeah, <laughs> how about poverty? Run away. Run away. <laughs> Run away. <laughs> She's going to cost us a chance at a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Amanda. Run away. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, run okay. away. I would have I would have kissed her five years ago, but after interviewing her, run away. Because <laughs> oh. she ran away from your interview. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Karma. How about Mad Dog? Oh, kiss the shit oh. out of her. <laughs> I mean, I would say wrestle, but I'd lose. So I'll I would do everything. Hug. I would do everything on that list except for slap and run away. I would kiss her. I would hug her. I would wrestle her. Listen to gangster rap with her. Uh, <laughs> Mama C. Hug. I actually right. have hugged her, so hug again. Yeah. <laughs> I'll join in on the hug fest. All right. Gretchen. Ah. Uh, Everything I said with Mad Dog and more. All right. <laughs> uh, how about host a podcast with? Oh, yeah. nice. Oh, okay, geez. we threw our own option there. Yeah. All right, so we're going to hit some of the guys here. How about Philip, Wait a second. specialist? <laughs> we forgot to kiss Ben. Um, <laughs> now we're left with Philip. <laughs> with Philip? <laughs> um, I would wrestle with Philip. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I would run away from Philip, but my wife would be running to him. So uh, he's shirtless. Might all the time. As well just, yeah, might as well just hug Philip and get it done with. <laughs> all right, we'll do a couple more. We'll do a couple more before we wrap this. Ozzy, oh, slap the shit out of him. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just an object to slap him with too. <laughs> can I slap him with you, Billy? Can I just pick you up and slap Ozzy with you? <laughs> this is for All Cook right. Island. <laughs> All right, that's pretty. That's pretty hard to top. That's pretty hard. So you know what? I would just leave it there and say that uh, that uh, the other thing that was mentioned that they would love to hear Sonya back on the podcast. Yes, so you Christopher. Yeah, well, you know, uh, she's kind of. She's kind of been to herself a lot, so it'd be hard to to pull off. But yeah, I would I would say uh like have her bring her banjo, was it or ukulele? What was it? Ukulele? Ukulele, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it was. Yeah, have her have her pick up her ukulele and maybe do a song for us. You can well, we write us a form... new theme song. Our, yeah. our theme song is Ben talking right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. That's our 
assistant guy, <laughs> Jim. <laughs> you know what would be awesome? Is if Sonya played her ukulele and Wanda sang. Like, oh, this would be awesome. We've talked about this super band, this idea for years, you know, like just getting all the musical survivors coming together and just performing, you know, like in the Travelling Wilbury style super band. So, yeah, I really we're, we're down for that. Yeah. I, I'll admit, I'll admit the band that me and Matt would would, would, would form with, with uh, Lex, it probably just opened for Wanda and, and Sonya. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you still made it. If you open for Wanda and Sonya, you've made it. So, you know, it's fine. Yeah. yeah Some people know. aim for, like, you know, opening for the Rolling Stones. Nah, Wanda and Sonya. <laughs> you've made it. Oh, my gosh. All right. So, Olga, she says, uh, love from Israel as usual. Billy, loved you on the podcast last week and appreciate your answering my Vesepia question. Wow. Thank you. Um, this season is so very good. In this the first season in a long time to not have the tribes on a new player season just be tribes and not divided by a twist. So yeah, yeah, that's that's a True. good point. It's and, refreshing. I mean, even though I'm kind of complaining, I yeah, like I'm kind of complaining. Oh, I'm not really getting into these people, but I'm liking that this isn't a you know this versus this season. You know, it's not you know a, a race divided season or men versus women. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's almost like a straight season of Survivor. So maybe that'll give us a little bit more of a classic feel as we get further into it. So, so you're not feeling like left-handed versus right-handed anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thought, thinking about ducks, thinking about chickens. Go. Um, <laughs> yeah. well, it's, it's interesting because, like, I mean, you know, I, I, when I said Samoa, Samoa was really, what, the last season that didn't have a twist in general. It was just Samoa. Whereas I guess if right. you want to say by tribes, I mean, technically, uh, I mean, South Pacific, Philippines and Redemption Island was sort of not divided by something. It was just have a former player on it. So if you count yeah. them, but I mean, even then, since Philippines, what, Caramel and fans favorites and you had blood versus water and brains. But yeah, so like it really has been the first time you would say maybe since um, the Philippines. Yeah, that it hasn't, the tribes at least haven't been divided with a twist and that yeah it's a good point actually it's it is i agree with colin it's refreshing and we don't have to come up with fake distinctions like yeah. healers or no callers yeah <laughs> right right yeah cat that's lovers versus dog lovers yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh that's yeah that dirty dancing bad. fans versus <laughs> normal people <laughs> So Marlene, I like her last name, Bottoms. Marlene Bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> the best last name of I, all I'm, fans. I'm a top. Uh, whatever floats your boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am disappointed that J the James two idols are not together as a pair. That would have made uh, fun viewing to see how someone would hide these two idols. So she wanted the double idol. Like for, the pecs, I, the I guess pec idols. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe to have them both as one idol – Instead of it being two separate idols, a double idol? Maybe it just what? came down to the fact that they couldn't get them both. Like, I love, didn't Jeff explain <laughs> that it took them a lot of hunting to find some of these down? Um, because I, for one, if I'm like James and I have these still, because I, I would want to keep them, and if CBS is like, hey, we want them back, I'd be like, okay, well, you've got to guarantee that I get to keep these things when you get them back, or B, no, unless you put me back on the show, or something like that. Like, or, or, Billy, we or, want or, your or famous C. skull shirt. No, put me back on the show. <laughs> yeah, or C, have a lot of zeros on that check that you're going to yeah. send me to get the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Burnett, you're still yeah. rich. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, so Hilda says... Uh, uh, this episode was a blind side. I didn't think Morgan was going. Uh, reminded me of the viewer blind side from Austra Australian Survivor. What do you no. think of that? Uh, well, I thought Colin could answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I mean, there were a few viewer ones. The thing to go with Australian Survivor, which is just it's too long. There's too many of these twists and this, that, and everything else. So um, I see what you're saying, Hilda, but I personally don't agree with it. I think it was a blind oh. side just because, like, when she was voted out, I'm like, who's Morgan? Is there a Morgan <laughs> on this season? The entire tribe from Pearl Island just got voted out. What? <laughs> Reverse the curse. Woo. 
So so she says she's picked up on something. She asked if you've noticed on uh, noticed the episodes when advantages are found at camp, no advantages are found at Ghost Island. Mm. So that's something she's picked up on. It. She's I guess she's trying to say that if you find an advantage within the game, then maybe that's what they're doing at Ghost Island where there's no advantage available. You don't play this week. But or I, the other way around, you know, the Ghost Island thing happens first, and then they just plant one right in front of a person yeah. back at camp. <laughs> maybe, we need maybe this week. When was the last episode of Survivor when there wasn't some form of advantage or idol found or, you know, like wow. there's a question for our uh, our historians out there. Because, I mean, I, I'm going to think it's been a long time since we've just had a straight episode of Survivor. Episode six of Guatemala? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the good old days. Episode six of Guatemala. Wow. Wow. That's a good one. That's a good question. Um. All right, so we got from Twitter here. We got LA LAD undercover twenty two, who's <laughs> uh, who says, uh, "Yeah, no offense, Billy, but but it's good to have you <laughs> you guys meeting Ben and Colin back." Uh, and so he wants to know uh, uh, why did Canada do so terrible in the Olympics? Oh, all right, I've been waiting for this one for two days. Get your okay. statement out, Colin. Get your pre written statement out. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, we won more medals than we have at any other Olympic Games in history. We were a couple of gold medals shy of our record, which was the all-time record, which was only tied this Olympics by two other countries. We're third in the standings, but you just hit a nerve of every Canadian fan because we failed to win a gold in hockey, and we failed to win a medal in men's and women's curling. So I guess you could look at it as a failure, as most of our country is, but the numbers don't lie. Canada, number three in the world. Well, I, I agree. I was, I was only thinking that maybe he was like, you know, going like, why did you suck so badly in Athens? Like, you really should have yeah. won more medals in 2004. <laughs> like, did he specifically say which Olympics? You know, so, you know. Yeah, you know what? For me, I was just happy that the Dominican Republic competed in a Winter Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> Ben was thinking the same thing about Australia with the results they had. And again, we apparently were disappointed with two silvers and a bronze, and I think that's fucking fantastic. So, um, that's I, great. Look, yeah. lad, lad, I, I love your, I love your messages. I think they're great. But dude, like, are you just trolling here, mate? Because seriously, like, Canada did great. Australia are proud of us. Uh, I mean, maybe you're like a, I don't know, a, a Lichtensteinian uh, heritage, and you're just kind of, I, I really don't know. Or maybe you're Norwegian, and you're like, ah, the only time we can gloat about things. Is in the Winter Olympics. The rest, we just go back to being Norway, and no one realizes we exist. So, yeah. <laughs> Hello to all our Norwegian <laughs> listeners. Joppy. Right. So, okay, it's time for Granny Survivor. Yay! <laughs> all right, Granny. Yeah, so, so uh, she says, "Hello, dears. What a fantastic episode! I, I love that. I wasn't sure who was going, and the person who did go surprised her." Um, it's good to see Ben and Colin back on the podcast. I totally agree with that. And uh, so here's her, here's her, here's her trivia. Uh, last week, uh, Figgy actually got a winning record. I was pleasantly surprised. Aww, figs. But but there was a Cook Island question in there, and I tried my best like to keep a poker face <laughs> to not give it away. But, but my, my poker face. My poker face is probably the worst one in Survivor history. So, <laughs> no, I thought you were lying when you said you're in love with Candace. I didn't fall for it. <laughs> yeah. you despise, I despise you, Candace. You're disgusting. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So here we go. The true or false? Kelly Wentworth is the last player to play, the last female player to play an idol on Survivor. Uh, false. True. All right, we got Ben one nothing on Colin. It was oh, yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lauren Reimer was the was the uh, first player since Kelly to find an idol, but she didn't play it. True? I think that's true. Did I not hear that statistic last? No, no, season? that's 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 why. No, that's why. I'm just giving you why Kelly Wentworth was the last to play. Oh, oh, oh. okay. I thought it was question number two. Well, we were both okay, right. Yeah. We were both right. It's two one. <laughs> there you go. Extra points. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So question number two. Sari is the only castaway to be idled out in multiple seasons. True. Was she idled out in another season? 
False. What was she idled out in another season? You're asking for the answer before you answer. No, but like I, <laughs> yeah, I think that's right? a trick question because I can't think of like what Heroes Villain she was voted out. Micronesia she was voted out at the final three. Uh, which is is that what they're classifying the as idled out? Played. And Panama she yeah the last time she played. I'm gonna say false. The last time. She... All right, so the answer is it's one to one between the two of you. The answer was true. Oh, bullshit. Because the last time Sari played, remember it was. Everybody played an advantage, including I. No, no, no. I, I, but what and was the she... other one? What was the other one? I know that one. What was the first one that she was idled out in? Um, yeah, that's a good question from, from Granny here. <laughs> that's um... what I'm trying to ask. Like, I know, I know, Granny game changes she point. was. But like, I, well, I seriously want Granny to explain that because maybe she's thinking of Micronesia because they kind of flipped it up at the last minute. But Heroes Villain, she was voted out what, like third or fourth, and Panama, she wasn't idled out. So. Oh, are they uh, referring? This is I don't... this is just like Australia in the Olympics. You get one wrong. It's like no, no, no. Wait a second. <laughs> I want clarification <laughs> on that question. All right, that's what I Next want. Show. You want clarification? Fair enough. All right. Give so, uh, question number three. Question number three. Sue Hawk's last season, uh, last Survivor event appearance was at the reality rally in 2013. Well, false. <laughs> false. All right, all right. You both got that. She last appeared at the tenth anniversary party. That that yeah, one I kind of nothing. We we could never find Sue. I think we got a phone number for her, and it just didn't. Yeah, she was one of the yeah. like the the rare ones we've never really been able to get remotely close to getting on the show. So yeah, yeah. Here's another tenth anniversary party question. Vanuatu and Palau are the only seasons to have everyone attend the tenth anniversary party. Now, that is false because I know false. it was only Vanuatu. Uh, I think Thailand was one away, but Heidek didn't go. Um, Palau didn't. I, I know for certain Vanuatu was the only one that had all of them. All right, Colin? False. I false. I trust that. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, you're both right that it was false, but she says Vanuatu and Gabon had all their all their people there. Oh, I've Ben's seen the again, no uh, look. You... I, look, I, I've seen the lists, and from what I remember, it was only Vanuatu was the only one that did. But I look, you know, Granny might have been there. So <laughs> <laughs> I was drunk, so I couldn't. Even I'm not trying that. to be that guy, <laughs> but come on. <laughs> All right, last one here. Uh, Penny was the first contestant to cry after another contestant was voted out. Wait, reread, reread that one. Penny was the first contestant to cry after another contestant was voted out in Survivor history. I want to say yeah. f- false, because I feel didn't, like, Brandon cry after Lindsay was voted out on Africa? Uh, I'm just going to go yeah. with false. I'm going to answer true, because I learned from mine and Ben's Oscar predictions <laughs> that we have to pick the opposite position for one of us to win this. All right. Fair enough. Uh, I, if I were playing, my answer would be Penny who? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the answer is true. Nah. She's the first contestant. Boo. <laughs> oh, wait, Ben's going to challenge it again. Hold on. <laughs> So that was her last question. That was that was great. These, these were some really, really hard questions. There was stuff that I was there for, like the 10th anniversary stuff, that I couldn't answer. <laughs> well, I've, I've, found, I've found a list, and this is a, yeah, uh, but according to this list, I'm actually seeing, like, she's right, Gabon saying here 18 out of 18. So maybe I just wow. was drunk too when I first read that. Well, actually, technically, technically, there were three seasons with all their things because everyone from Heroes vs. Villains was there too, even though it was the party before Heroes vs. Uh, Villains aired. So technically, let's Granny... Just, no, let's just talk technicality here, okay? Three people have played this game in two episodes, and Ben, you're last place, all right? <laughs> Shut up. I don't ever want to come this show again. It sucks. Since, since you're looking stuff up, hey, what, what was the Sari thing? What was the oh, other the other know. time she was idled out? I've already I've already decided to mutiny against you guys and start my own podcast. It's going to be called. Oh, um, okay, never mind. Ben that means he just community. found out Brady was right, and now he's ignoring that question. Yes. <laughs> ben Survivor Community coming soon. Bring it on. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh. So so that brings us to uh to uh let me just tell the listeners that we'll be back again next week for another recap. Um 
we'll we'll post up who's gonna who's gonna actually be our next guest. I'm hoping it's Earl, the winner of Survivor Fiji, but oh. he just he just had a baby, so uh, it's kind of it's kind of neither here nor there baby. as of right now. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So so congratulations to Earl, by the way. So I'm hoping he could make it. I'm hoping he. I'm hoping his baby will let him watch the episode. I hope he so didn't he have a difficult that. labor. I hope. I hope he like you know just it was. Never mind. The joke fell flat. Sorry, Billy. I'm interrupting. <laughs> it's all right. I'm sure one person got right. it. I'm sure Granny got it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So so until next week, I'd like to say thank you to our executive producer Ben Watersworth. And y- you're thank welcome. you to Even Colin with that extra S in my name. Thank you. Hey, hey, like I said, being Hispanic and a New Yorker, that S is almost in every word. It's all right. Every American basically calls me Watersworth. I'm I'm used to it, so it's fine. (laughs) I say, how you's doing? (laughs) You'd fit well in Australia then, certain suburbs. Yeah. (laughs) And we should thank Billy's Garcias as well. Yes, thank you, Billy's Garcias. It's great to have you's on the shows. And thank you for doing all these hosting too. Like uh, Colin and I have just been lazy this season. We're you know having time off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no worries, no worries. So until next week, uh, thank you, Oz Network fans. Thank you for listening to the Oz Network. Don't forget to subscribe to get new episodes delivered to your speakers every week. For more information, hit us up at theoznetwork.net.